building a winning sports team. We talked to sports columnist Cahal Kelly about why so many Canadian teams struggle to be successful. And later, one stadium where you will definitely need earplugs. I'm Madeline White. Welcome to Globe Now. The end of September is bittersweet for Blue Jays fans. They're sad the season is over, but also, perhaps secretly, happy the suffering is done. Here's a fact that might astonish you. In the 19 years that Derek Jeter played baseball, the Jays did not advance to the playoffs once. Not once. Plus, they stand second overall on the leaderboard for the longest current postseason drought. And it's no better for most Canadian hockey and basketball fans either. Only one Canadian hockey team made it into the playoffs last year. And while the Raptors did fans proud by scoring a postseason spot for the first time since 2008, they were trounced in the first round by the Brooklyn Nets. So what's going wrong for our big league teams? Here to try to answer that question is sports columnist Cahal Kelly. Welcome, Cahal. Hi, thanks for having me. So now it seems that uh, a lot of Toronto sports fans especially are a bit of a sadistic bunch. What's yeah. going wrong with these teams? Well, I mean, you could argue that it's mismanagement. I, I would suggest it's luck. If we think in terms of the fact that in any given league, roughly 30 teams, one team wins, so you got 3% odds of winning every year. Those aren't great odds. Toronto, it's terribly bad. I think we just take playoffs in most cases, but for most of the teams in the country, it's pretty cyclical. You know, there's some, you know, obviously the Oilers aren't great. Flames haven't done so well, but the Canucks have had a lot of success over recent years. The Senators are looking a lot better, and the Canadians are actually in fairly good shape. So really, maybe this is just a Toronto thing more than anything else. So Toronto's cursed. Yeah, Toronto saying. might be cursed. I think <laughs> we should dig up the ACC and look for, like, bones. Probably. Uh, but also, I wonder, does not money factor into this somehow? Money is an issue, but, I mean, we're talking basketball and hockey about salary cap leagues. So everybody gets the same amount of money to spend. It's how you spend it. In that sense, it really shows who has management skills. The Leafs and the Raptors. Raptors looking a lot better, but the Leafs have had a lot of trouble. The Leafs probably enter, entering a bad rebuilding phase as they try to manage having a couple of stars and not much around them. So not looking so great on that front, I'm afraid. So going back to your idea of luck, though, I mean, some, I, at least Blue Jays fans, might argue that it's a context thing. It's because we're in a division where mm. we're just never going yeah. to win. Does that factor into it at all? Well, I mean, if you look at it this year, that's always been the cry. It's always been quite true. The, but the American League East this year was very weak, incredibly weak, as weak as it's been since we've seen it. Boston was terrible. New York was not terribly good. You know, this was the chance, and they didn't take it. Luck, I think, factors a little less in in baseball where no salary cap, you can buy as many players as you want. If you're going to spend the money, you can put it together as the Yankees have proven, the Dodgers are proving right now. You can, you can buy yourself championships. And I think it could be argued in 92 and 93 when the Jays last won a championship, they bought the second one for sure. Hmm. So now if you had to point to maybe like three things that team ownerships could be doing better, what would they be? Uh, I mean, I think it is a function of smarts. Money is an issue, but it's luck. I mean, you know, it's it's when Pittsburgh Penguins go down to the bottom and they pick up in successive rounds Sidney Crosby, Kenny Malkin, and Jordan Stahl. Like, I mean, when they can go around and just scoop up such great players. And the Leafs have been down there very close to the bottom for a long time, and you can't think of a generational talent they picked up. Luck is such a huge factor in hockey, basketball, in every sport, but in those two particularly, the Leafs have none of it. Hmm. That's kind of disheartening yes. to hear as a fan. But we do have, uh, we can't have you on without bringing out a reader tweet or oh, a reading I, comment. I'm so sure it's very complimentary. Uh, it is, it is. Here, the, here's one that we'd like you to respond to. So they write, Dear Mr. Reporter, the season hasn't begun and you're claiming it's the worst team in the world. Please just don't. I well, think they're talking about the Leafs here, to be well, fair. Well, first off, I would say it's it's uh, it's not Mr. Reporter. It's Mr. Columnist. Okay, Mr. Columnist. Uh, but, uh, for the rest of it, he's probably right. Now, in fairness, I was referencing the fact that ESPN called them the worst team in, the, in North America, which I don't think they necessarily are. But, I mean, let's be realistic. You're looking at this team right now. Unless their goal, goaltender, Jonathan Bernier, plays, plays on his head, this is not a team that's going to make the playoffs. This is not a great team. And I appreciate that Leafs Nation 619 is feeling chuffed about the season, but I suggest he's not going to be feeling too great in about six months. Hmm. But perhaps it's fair to say they're the unluckiest team yeah, based off what you're saying. That's possibly true. Interesting. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Cahal. Thanks for having me. Well, we want to hear from you. Why do you think so many Canadian teams, especially those in Toronto, seem to struggle to win? Tweet us your thoughts. Our Twitter handle is at GlobeNow. 
One way to get a team motivated is with a strong fan base and loud cheers. The Kansas City Chiefs fan base is taking loud to a whole new level. Arrowhead Stadium just broke the record for the loudest outdoor sporting venue in the world. As the Globe and Mail's Cheryl Sutherland explains, it was only a few decibels away before eardrums could explode. Fans are competitive creatures. They even compete with each other for the title of loudest stadium. Seriously. You had it. It was yours. The loudest ever. But that record is not yours anymore. It's time to take it back. And on September 29th, Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City has broken the record for the loudest outdoor sporting venue in the world. Their goal was to cheer at 140 decibels, and they managed to reach... But just how loud is that? To give you an idea, a loud rock concert measures about 110 decibels. An ambulance siren is 120 decibels. And at 150 decibels, experts say your eardrums can explode. The battle for loudest outdoor venue is pretty much a two-stadium race. In September of 2013, Seahawks fans set an outdoor noise record of 136.7 decibels. Then, in October of that year, the Chiefs grabbed the record with a mark of 137.5. Not to be outdone, the fans in Seattle reclaimed the record by being just a tenth of a decibel louder in December. This is about the same loudness as fireworks or a jackhammer. The average NFL game is estimated to be in the 90 decibel range or about the sound of a lawnmower. So what conditions are needed to break a sound record in a stadium? Some experts say weather can influence it. The speed of sound is greater in hot air than it is in cold. Stadium design also contributes to loudness. CenturyLink's aluminum seating, for example, does a better job reflecting noise. But of course, the main factor comes down to the size and excitement of the fans themselves. So whether you plan on heading to a Chiefs or a Seahawks game, make sure to bring some earplugs. That's it for today's show. Remember, you can find us on Twitter at GlobeNow. I'm Madeline White. Thanks for watching.